actually gets a pretty good fizzle out of it when I let it cook in my lunchbox all day. Welcome to the Red River Valley of North Dakota. A land flowing with milk and honey. You're watching Beet Farm and Mitch. Well, we're coming up on 5.20 p.m. here. It is June 16th. The corn is looking nice. That is what I'm in right now is a field of corn and we are running something called the side dresser. So the side dresser is basically giving the corn some farm grade miracle grow. But right now we got 28% nitrogen in the tank and we are giving the corn a little early season jolt. The corn's looking pretty good here. I mean, I can't complain. As long as we can get the rains, we'll be good to go. So the side dresser, this is the Blue Jet side dresser. It's actually 23 rows, but technically 24 because you don't want to like overlap twice in one spot. Otherwise you would be wasting fertilizer and we don't want to do that. So we got liquid, um, I was gonna say liquid nitrogen, which I suppose is true, but also not probably true. <laughs> um, it's nitrogen fertilizer in liquid form available for the plants, not the freezing liquid nitrogen. So anyway, in down here we've got like all these discs that go in between each row and behind each disc there's a little nozzle that's spraying down the liquid, the liquid fertilizer. And so that is what is going through there and that's going a couple inches down into the soil where the corn can get to it when it's time for it, which is about now. And every once in a while, one of those nozzles will plug, and that's pretty important that I catch that, because if it's plugged, it's not putting any fertilizer down, and you don't want that. So every once in a while I'll have to go, I'll have to clean that out, make sure it's spraying a nice jet stream. Yeah. And even though we can do everything in our hands to uh, take care of the crops, we still need some more rain from the heavens. Everything's kind of just barely grasping on this year, so we're going to need some rain. They're talking potentially some showers on Sunday, so we're going to definitely continue to need these timely rains. It's kind of like it rains and then we're good for a little bit and then we'll need more rain and that's just kind of been the name of the game this year with how little moisture we've had my sprayer control module. This is where I can see how much I have in the tank. I kind of have to set it manually. I can see the rates that I'm going at. Um, it really changes kind of depending on the field and what our kind of production goals are, you know? So if we have a field where the corn looks really nice, we feel okay investing into that right now. So we'll put it on um, more of an average rate instead of a little light this year. And every crop's nutrient requirements are different. A crop like corn is gonna require a lot of nitrogen. It just uses a lot. Um, and if there isn't enough, it becomes deficient easily. Uh, wheat also requires a fair bit. Uh, but like sugar beets, you actually don't wanna put too much nitrogen on sugar beets because if you do, the sugar beets will just grow vegetatively um, and they'll mostly just pack on tons, but they won't really grow, they won't convert any of their, as much of their water into sugar or sucrose. And so that is a really big thing, um, is kind of finding those balances and equilibriums, because like, I forget the exact economic term, 
But basically, there's kind of a production equilibrium where, like, yes, you could put, like, a gallon an acre of fertilizer down on corn, but is it going to help? Maybe a little, but probably not going to be in that economic threshold. So you got to find your equilibriums and just do your best with that. Uh, we're doing 12 gallons an acre right now of 28%. So that seems to be kind of our target for right now. Line up in the rows, activate the GPS, fire up the side dresser, drop her down and get up to speed. So I've got one of my favorite summertime snacks today. Two things in one bag. And I've got my salt shaker, so you know what that means? It's some vegetable time. So right here, we've got a delicious, French breakfast radish from the garden. Give it a little lick. Tap a little salt on it. Voila! Garden veggies in the summer. Man, life is good. Item number two. We got an onion. Green onion from the garden. Check a little salt on it. That'll wake you up. I said yes, I wouldn't entirely be right. And if I said yes, I wouldn't entirely be wrong. Anyway, green onion, French breakfast, and another radish. German giant. You can kind of see, these are my two favorite garden varieties of radishes growing up. You can see the difference between a French breakfast and a German giant. The German giant's kind of round, and the French breakfast is kind of oblong, so. Both very good varieties. Ooh, I tell you what, maybe we can see which one is spicier. I'll try that. You gotta dab a little salt on it. Because you don't want to get salt all over the tractor cam. I'd give it a spice ranking of three. Salt on the German giant. I'd say it's about one notch higher. Oh, it's biting a little bit more now. One and a half. Maybe even a five. We'll give the German giant a five. We'll give the French breakfast a three. It's on the spice ranking. Hey, we might as well rate the green onion too. The green onion is just like a category of its own, you know? It's not like a radish spice. It's almost like a, like an onion spice. What do we give the German Giant a five, a French breakfast a three? I'd give this a six, you know, a six and a half. She's a little potent. We'll go with the six. So there you go, the vegetable ranking competition. We got the, the green onion with the six, we got the German giant radish with a five, and then we got the French breakfast radish with a three, and that is what I do to stay occupied in the tractor on some of these long days. Yeah, I can feel the radish. A little zing and pep. Woo! Uh, everybody's getting burnt out here. We are going to bring your book. Pick up and put it in that driveway where we just feel. When you feel like quitting, you're not going to be close enough to be standing an hour or whatever, are you? No, I'd say I'm about halfway there. That's going to be too long. So, but yeah, if you just bring my pickup out here and I'll just take off and whatever. Yeah, and then come back and do it in the morning. Just for no bird work until dark now and then. Right out of the south, right at 9 o'clock. Yep, that sounds like a good plan. 